I'd like to turn to another topic uh, that's on everybody's minds, and that's the efforts here in the United States Senate to reform the way in which our campaigns are financed and the way in which uh, that information is shared with the public. Uh, many of my colleagues uh, took to the floor last night to discuss the importance of the Disclose Act and to draw attention to the enormous volume of undisclosed money that's now flowing into this campaign season and into those campaigns. The uh, democracy is strengthened by casting light on spending an Elections Act, or as it's known in its shorter form, the Disclose Act, uh, is an important step forward. It was conceived as a response to the U.S. Supreme Court's 2010 Citizens United decision. And many of us have watched uh, with deep concern as the consequences of that decision play out this election season. Unlimited and often secret contributions to organizations known as super PACs are pouring into our election system and literally drowning out the voices of ordinary Americans who don't happen to be millionaires or billionaires. And instead of a system where candidates exchange ideas and share their vision for a more prosperous country, the Citizens United decision has unleashed a relentless array of attack ads. And the American people have no idea where they're coming from or who is footing the bill. And this sort of unlimited and secret influx of cash is raising the specter of corruption in our elections. And frankly, Mr. President, I'm worried that uh, we're entering an era of politics that we haven't seen since the Watergate scandal of some 40 years ago. There is hope, however, because despite uh, what I thought was a misguided decision uh, tied to Citizens United, the Supreme Court did uphold Congress's power to require transparency when it comes to those unlimited campaign dollars. And so the Disclose Act was born. And let me share with the viewers what the Disclose Act would do. It would require that super PACs, corporations, labor unions, and other independent groups file a public disclosure with the Federal Election Commission for any campaign-related disbursement of over $10,000 or more within 24 hours of the expenditure. This basic requirement is designed to bring the exchange of these secret campaign dollars out of the shadows so Coloradans and all the American people know who is trying to influence our elections. That's it. It's simple and it makes sense. We're only asking that political spending and funding be disclosed and held to the same standard as traditional political action committees and candidate expenditures. This sensible requirement will not create burdensome regulations or be in conflict with any of the holdings of the Supreme Court. It's the kind of common sense transparency that Coloradans are calling for. It uh, might sound cliche, but sunlight is truly the best disinfectant. In fact, I heard the leader of our caucus, Senator Reid, mention that the Republican leader, Senator McConnell, had used that same concept. Sunlight is truly the best disinfectant. And we literally stomp on the basic principles of democracy when we allow tens of millions of dollars to be secretly spent on our elections. And I want to emphasize that this should not be a partisan issue. Despite last night's vote, we, you would think we could all surely agree on transparency. For example, our colleague, Senator McCain, has lamented that without reform and transparency, the Citizens United decision could lead to a major campaign finance scandal. And of course, that's not healthy for our democracy. The Supreme Court affirmed Congress's authority to require disclosure, so let's do our job to protect democracy and bring sunlight to our elections. Let's bring the Disclose Act forward and pass it right away. I also know, Mr. President, many Americans would like to see us overturn the effects of Citizens United altogether, and there are efforts to do exactly that. For example, Senator Tom Udall of New Mexico has introduced a constitutional amendment that would give Congress the power to regulate political spending. I support that effort. I also support an effort to change 
the way in which we fund presidential elections. And I've introduced legislation, the Presidential Funding Act, that would reform the currently outdated presidential public finance system. It's a bill that's aimed at preserving the voices of average Americans. In 1974, the presidential public campaign finance system was developed in an effort to restore public faith in elected officials after the Watergate scandal, and it's been used in nearly every presidential election since. By establishing public financing, we allow candidates to compete based on their ideas instead of competing on who has the most support from special interests and deep-pocketed donors. In fact, my father, Congressman Morris Udall, who served in the House representing uh, the second district in Arizona for some 30 years, was actually one of the first to use the public financing system, which he had helped craft two years prior when he ran for the Democratic nomination in 1976. My father was a big believer in running for office on behalf of his constituents instead of on behalf of big money. And I believe strongly that that ethos ought to apply today's elected officials more than ever. The public financing system funded candidates for 30 years and has enriched the political discourse of the country by ensuring that the American people have more sway than connected insiders, special interests, or wealthy donors. Unfortunately, the current system's inability to keep up with the enormous spending required in presidential campaigns has rendered it less effective. And thanks to Citizens United, public financing is no longer a viable option to compete against unlimited special interest dollars. My legislation would strengthen the public financing system, incentivize candidates to obtain support from actual citizens, not special interest super PACs or secret financiers. It would ensure that our proven public financing system would be available for future elections and that corporate and special interest money don't drown out genuine ideas and debates in our presidential elections. So for those of us who are committed to fixing our campaign finance system in the wake of Citizens United, there is a lot of challenging work ahead. But I know that Coloradans agree with me that reform could be the single most important issue that fix the way our democracy functions. As I've suggested and as we know, Mr. President, unfortunately, federal elections are increasingly about who can secretly appeal more to wealthy and special interests instead of working to improve the lives of average and hardworking Americans. This sows corruption, dysfunction, and a government that is less responsive to the needs of the people. Today we have an opportunity to start with a sensible requirement that we should all be able to agree on. Disclosure is nothing to be afraid of. So I urge my colleagues to reconsider their vote and to allow the Senate to at least debate the Disclose Act. We cannot afford to let another filibuster stand in the way of fair and open campaigns. Let's pass the Disclose Act and take a big step towards turning the power of our government back over to the American people. Mr. President, uh, thank you for your attention. I yield the floor. I note that uh, the leader of this important effort, the Disclose Act, Senator Whitehouse of Rhode Island, is on the floor. I want to thank him for his leadership and for his commitment to ensuring that it's the American people that determine our future, not special interests, super PACs, and millionaires and billionaires and financiers who uh, leave no track, no trace of where their money is going or where it's come from. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.